uh, what's up? For this video, I thought I would do a bit of the first video in a new series, as I said I'll be making. A series to do with something you find from the internet. But instead, I've decided that'll be the next video. In this video, how to sustain people. How to sustain human civilization. This will be a lot of math, pals. Peoples of the internet. Oh god. Right, so out of boredom, as I was playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 on my Xbox One, and uh, watching a few episodes of the TV series What We Do in the Shadows, I had the idea of just researching how much land is actually needed to sustain a person. I already know that, so it's more a matter of how much land is needed to sustain, theoretically, 10 billion human beings that are alive on this planet, or will be, because of population growth. And I found 5,000 by 5,000 kilometres. That is, of course, assuming that every individual person requires 50 by 50 metres. And it's 25 by 25 metres for a vegan, 50 by 50 metres for a vegetarian, or 110 by 110 metres for a meat heater. For simplicity, I just used vegetarian. People still need their dairy. That would mean the human race would need 10 billion multiplied by 50 by 50, that number, so the answer is 5,000 by 5,000 kilometres, or 5 by 5 heights of Britain according to a map. So that's really troubling, as you need a lot of land. That's basically a continent of land material. Then I thought, hold on, people are thinking of having farms that are very tall buildings that are for the process of vertical farming. So maybe make a city that is a kilometre tall. And then I thought, kilometre tall? How about a kilometre deep? And that's when this calculation was created. Uh, that is assuming that a floor consists of 10 metres height, you know, 5 metres head height, followed by 5 metres of a ceiling or the floor. That is, of course, for the wires, the pipes, then per a kilometre deep you will get a hundred floors. That means the 5,000 by 5,000 kilometres can be divided by 100. I found you'd actually need more like... Ooh! That's a tenth in one direction, and a tenth in a different direction. You need 500 by 500 kilometres of land material, just so long as it is a kilometre deep. Uh, of course, then that's, that is uh, assuming you have a set of 100 floors, all stretching from 1,000 meters all the way into the ground, being split into uh, being a matter of this 500 kilometers by this 500 kilometers. You know, you've gone from a country a land to uh, you've gone from continent land to country land. Well, that's not bad. I mean, then there's a matter of how much energy is needed. Yeah, energy, obviously, there is an amount of energy that is needed. So, how much energy is needed? Uh, the plant gets just one percent of solar energy, so 6.25 amount of watts per square meter per hour. And then I figured, hold on, thorium vision. Here's a quick update about thorium vision, about good old thorium vision. 
there's a bit of new light concerning thorium, as opposed to being 4.8 uh, million kilowatts per gram, it's more like 22,000 ki uh, kilowatts per gram. That means, as opposed to the amount of thorium, assuming one part per million, that means the amount of thorium in one cubic meter of ground being enough to sustain a person for 100 years, that's more likely to sustain a person for 2.8 years or 2.3 years. However, you could still go for 1,000 times the uh, cubic meter of ground containing a cubic centimeter of thorium because there's, that's uh, 22 kilowatts per gram, then half because of thorium having half efficiency for a method, then times 11.7 because of thorium's density. That'll be, 11, that'll be an estimated 11.7 grams per cubic centimeter. That's not bad. Uh, taking all this into account, right, the human race could power itself all from the amount of thorium in five cubic kilometers of land. The area that we are mining, uh, that a kilometer deep, is 250,000 squared kilometers. There's a kilometer deep. That is, divided by five, just enough energy for 50,000 years. But considering you have to divert half of, uh, a lot of energy into uh, the process to grow plants. I mean, the amount of plant, the amount of energy that would be in 50 by 50 meters of plant material, then how much energy it gets per hour, then how much, how many hours per day, means I mean, the average person would need 10 kilowatts of energy in the form of plant material. Fortunately, my calculations for how much energy is needed to power society, that all relies upon assuming that an individual human being requires 150 kilowatts. That is 30 kilowatts per day for a house, 30 for an electric powered car, and the rest just in case. For example, uh, the amount of energy that you might e uh, be applying at work, or the amount of energy you are, you are taking up from an airplane. Or in this case, for uh, food. It's just a matter of having that energy be applied in the form of UV lamps or a, a type of lamp made to generate a type of light or something. So, yeah, uh, you could divert one of those. Uh, that 150 is 30 times 5. Come on. That means you can divide one of those 30 kilowatts per day into the 10 kilowatts you need of plant material. So... Yeah. That means... Oh, and then there's a matter of how many nuclear reactors you need. You can have a thorium reactor, but I don't know if the reactor also counts as a power plant, but a reactor for thorium can be one cubic meter. However, I've also found designs for two cubic meters, like two meters tall. Obviously, meh, that's not bad. So, I feel like I say not so bad so often. That's probably bad. Meh. Uh, considering you need a bit of room for around every reactor, then that could be a reactor per... Well, that is a one megawatt react, a reactor being divided by 10 by 10 meters or 100 meters just squared. That means you could power uh, more than 10 uh, layers, more than 100 sets of these floors filled with plants. Meaning you could actually sustain... That's more than enough energy to power everything, and there is all the thorium that you've collected to mine. Uh, you could actually sustain 10 billion people from 500 by 500 kilometers, that is a kilometer deep, consisting of 100 floors, 
every one of them 10 metres tall, 10 metres deep. Then there is an extra floor that is filled with a lot of thorium reactors, all being one megawatt per hour and taking up one or two cubic metres, but being surrounded by several metres. Then, just in case, all uh, a bit of land to grow something like um, algae that you can make into anything from fuel to bags or something. You can make algae into fuel, into paper probably, or into bags. But uh, algae converted into a plastic, algae grows a litre per metre per day. So that means you need 10 billion squared metres, assuming you are trying to give all 10 billion people a kilogram of plastic per day, and it's all being recycled. That would be 100 kilometres by 100 kilometres. Therefore, adding that amount of land, you need 500... Yeah, that means five, no, 600 by 600 kilometres, that is a kilometre deep, all powered by thorium, is all you need. I thought I'd be using the calculator a lot more often. Never mind. Uh, oh, as uh, it, the thorium is not as powerful as I originally thought. However, it's only less powerful by 500. Meaning, as opposed to your 1,000 years of energy coming from one cubic metre of ground containing a, a cubic centimetre, you need 1,000 cubic metres of land, or 1,000 cubic metres of uh, cubic centimetres, or a cubic kilogram in volume, or 10 by 10 by 10 centimetres, or a kilogram. That'd be more than a kilogram, that'd be like 11 by 7 kilograms, but never mind. That's really useful. It's amazing how much the human race can need, but you can grow and you can get all of these things the human race tends to need. Please remember to like or dislike or comment or share or subscribe. Come to the comment section down come to the uh, commenting section down below and tell me your opinion. It's amazing how easy it is for civilization to be powered.